Well, my name is Bernard Bolt. I'm the resident agent in charge here of DEA. Um, to my left here, I have the Border Patrol Big Bend Sector Chief, John Smontana, uh, Culberson Sheriff, Oscar Creel, uh, the Superintendent of the Presidio uh, School District, Dennis McIntyre, um, HSI Supervisor, uh, Homeland Security, Department of Homeland Security, Jody Sharp, and uh, AUSA J. Miller. And uh, appreciate you bearing with me. This is the first one I've had to conduct, so, uh, or chair, or whatever you want to call it. Um, on May, uh, November 19th of 2012, the uh, Van Horn School, returning from a basketball game at the Presidio School District, um, stopped off at a local store. And at that point, employees of the school district noticed there was five unusual bags in the back underneath the bus. Um, at that time, they contacted the United States Border Patrol agents and they responded and took these five bags off the bus, had a canine run by the bus, indicated, and then subsequently found these bags were filled with marijuana, approximately 490 pounds, close to 500 pounds of marijuana. Um, that's we were responded, drug enforcement here, the multi-agency responded, and we began an investigation, what I call a cold case investigation. We had no, uh, no t nobody in j custody. We had nothing to start with except for five bags of marijuana. Through the cooperation um, from the various agencies, Homeland Security, the Texas Department of Public Safety, um, Border Patrol, the sheriffs from, I'm sorry, Sheriff Dominguez is also here, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Sheriff Dominguez, miss you. from Presidio County and then also from Culberson. We were able to indict two individuals with the United States Attorney's Office guidance for this, Anthony Juarez from Odessa and George Baird from Presidio, Texas for one count of attempted possession of between 100 kilograms and 1,000 kilograms of marijuana and one count of possession with intent to distribute between 100 kilograms and 1,000 kilograms of marijuana uh, within 1,000 feet of school, namely the Presidio High School. Um, my SAC, the Special Agent in Charge of the El Paso Division, has a quote here that I would like to read to you. The case involved a particularly brazen act of using a school bus and students as cover for the drug load. These arrests and federal charges should send a message that law enforcement agencies will work together to ensure that persons involved in this type of activity are brought to justice, especially when the safety of our children is concerned. This case also shows the importance of the cooperation we receive from diligent and honest citizens without whose assistance we could not do our job. Once again, this, I said this is the DEA, DEA El Paso Special Agent in Charge, Joseph Arabet statement. Um, he wishes he could be here today, but through the circumstances he couldn't. Um, once again, I'd say this was a cooperative effort of all the local law enforcement and state and federal agencies in this area. And so now I'm going to give it to Chief Smontana if you'd like to say something. To reiterate uh, Mr. Boff's words, I think this is an example of the cooperation in the area. When it originally happened, everybody realized the danger it posed to the students. Um, the entire community, the entire Big Bend area came together to resolve this. And I, and I think the uh, arrest and the indictment show what can happen when everybody works together, whether that's the public, uh, the school districts, you know, the different enforcement agencies. So again, it's just a, a, a real good sign of the cooperation and the spirit that we have in the Big Bend area. Jay, Ms. Miller? <coughs> sure. Uh, this is a culmination of almost seven months investigation which specifically uh, in coordination with our office with the uh, DEA task force with the Border Patrol and with the assistance of HSI here in Alpine as well as DPS Narcotics. Um, when you have initially in a, what we considered an abandoned load, uh, we developed certain information and finally we were able to identify the two individuals who were uh, subjects uh, who were responsible for this. I'd also like to note that in the indictment, it's just these two individuals and uh, neither school district, neither Presidio uh, Independent School District or Van Horn Independent School District, there was no involvement with any of their employees based on our investigation. And it's these two individuals that have been named in the indictment who are responsible for this. In addition, uh, <coughs> both individuals were arrested yesterday. Uh, they were initialed this morning before uh, 
uh, Judge Goins next door. Uh, their next hearing will be on Wednesday, June 19th for a preliminary, uh, pardon me, a detention hearing and they will be arraigned uh, on that day. Their next court appearance will be on or about uh, July 15th where they'll have a docket call to determine whether or not these individuals will plead guilty or want a trial. And if there is a trial, it will be on Tuesday, August 20th, tentatively. Thank you. Anything you'd like to add about the message that your colleague in El Paso said with respect to using a school bus allegedly? Well, I, you know, when you're in the, in the drug business and you're trying to get your illegal goods up north, they're going to use anything possible. I would recommend, and I think the school districts are well aware, and I think any uh, uh, law-abiding citizen knows, is when we live in a community like this, we trust each other, and what happens is they'll take uh, those who are trying to usurp the law will try to find a weakness in that system and uh, it just we have to be a little bit more uh, observant uh, for example most of us in these communities don't lock our car doors maybe something is when we uh, travel along the borders make sure everything's locked up so no one has access to it and uses us as uh, uh, susceptible as mules unknowing mules to bring uh, ill-gotten goods north thank you Also, like to stress too the uh, cooperation we got from both school districts, both uh, in Van Horn and uh, uh, Presidio. Their cooperation for the investigation um, led us to where we're at today. Is there anybody else have any questions? What, asking? Yeah, sure. Uh, what ultimately led uh, investigators to Juarez and Baird? Um, various investigative techniques, and some I'll go in. I can't really go into some of those techniques we used, but there was a lot of different sources and um, information that was gathered that led to their arrest. Okay. Was it, was it, did an informant lead to their arrest? At this time, just various different investigations, uh, very investigative techniques that we utilized. The, the, the public, okay, so this wasn't an informant, somebody who you regularly work with? Or can you give us any details on that? At this time, I, I can't give you any details. So. In your opinion, how does uh, how do two twenty somethings, early twenty somethings, get a hold of that much marijuana? What's the normal case? How does that happen? I well, mean, and I know they can't. They can sometimes they can hardly do shift work or whatever, and then, then all of a sudden they've got this like all this marijuana. How do these guys? Is there an organization behind it that we know about? Well, we there could be, and we can't go into details of what's behind it. But in our experience here along the border, we find different ages that are involved with large amounts of drugs. So it can be a 50, 60, 70 year old person raging down to an 18 year old, sometimes 17 year olds and 16 year olds that are transporting marijuana across the border. So Is there anything you could t tell us about the changing de you know, sort of demographics of, of suspects in, in these types of cases? You just mentioned their age. Is there, is there is there, are you trending younger? Are there any trends that you can talk about? It, there's no real trend. It goes back and forth. Sometimes it's young guys and sometimes it's older girls. You know, it all depends who the cartels or the individuals bringing adults across the border find to transport these loads. Around this area, what are, what are the cartels that are giving us the most trouble of late? Well, it would be the La Linea, the Juarez cartel, has always been very popular in this, on this end of the border where we're at here. But uh, there are other cartels that we go, you know, that I don't think we want to discuss today. So uh, that are moving into the area. So. And the narcotics did originate from Mexico. We believe they did. Yes. Yes, sir. Do, do we know anything about prior records on these two individuals? I think they. At this time. Uh, <coughs> that's still being investigated. I, nothing that would rise to. A, uh, prior felony convictions. Is, it, is this a normal length of time, seven months, for an investigation of a cold case like this? Well, like uh, Mr. Miller said, a lot of times we get abandoned loads that are obtained by the Border Patrol. They find out they're in the middle of the desert, in cars, etc. And we um, don't have any evidence and we don't pursue sometimes because of the nature of it. This, we put time and effort into this because the importance here we have drugs that are put onto a school bus. We look at the um, aspect of what's going on with the abandoned load. So this was sort of new to us. I don't think, uh, like I said, I've only been here for a few years, so I really don't know of any abandoned case that we've ever been able to process forward like this. Um, Mr. Miller might be able to say we've done more like this. Sometimes we tie abandoned loads into other organizations or other arrests, 
we'll, we'll have to actually go out there and find these groups that actually uh, did this to this and put this stuff on the bus is very unusual. So mm -hmm. it's what we want. We want to try to do that on every drug case, but sometimes we just can't. So. Does the government have a theory in the indictment? I, I didn't actually catch it about where this narcotics crossed into the United States. If that's if that's the theory you're working on, uh, across the border. Uh, somewhere in the southern part of uh, Presidio County there, so. Um, Do you think it went through a port of entry? Oh, I have no information on that at all. So. Any other questions? Were there any ties to these individuals to the actual school districts, either either one at all? Ties currently? Yeah. No, no, there were no ties. I, yeah. I believe one of them had gone to high school there, yes. Okay. But what's the procedure from the schools? I mean, they had to have had access to the bus to put them there. With, uh, the bus is not in a secure area, or how how is it possible that they even got the loads in there? Um, well, I, 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 do you want to answer that? Or I'll be glad to answer yeah. for you, but, but I'm, I'm going to tell you that that the the problem with answering that question is is it tends to point a finger one way or the, one direction or another. And, and I don't think any of us are willing to do that. We're all victims of this situation and, and of, of where we're going here. And, and I don't think that the blame needs to be put on one school district or another. You know, I know that our parking lots are monitored. They, we have cameras. And in order for, for this to be done without it being caught on camera, it would have to have been in, part of the bus would have been parked somewhere where the cameras weren't aimed at. So how that happened or where it happened, I'm just not even going to go there. I think that, uh, they just took advantage of a, an opportunity. Presidio ISD and every other ISD that is on the border, we have a very serious concern about this and we don't stick our heads in the sand. We have our own drug dogs in our, in our schools and we have a very strong police force in, in, uh, in Presidio that has very close ties with our sheriff's department and we're in an interlocal agreement with them and they help us. We search our own vehicles with drug dogs constantly on the parking lots, in, in and out of town, we just don't let it happen. And I think that this, what you need to be concentrating on is the fact that you have a multi-agency multi task force that's gone out of the way to help, to work together to interdict and to arrest people who are involved in the drug trafficking. That's what you need to be concerned with, and that's what you need to be focusing on here. But a lot of, a the, lot of people are going to say our children were still at risk. and that they're going to be constantly in risk in every community. In any community that doesn't think you don't have drugs, you're sticking your heads in the sand. You need to be aware of it, and you need to take the same kind of precautions and, and efforts that Presidio ISD and others on the border take. Um, when this sent a strong when message. When this first happened, the report uh, was out that the sheriff actually rode on the bus with the kids on their leg games. Is that true? Well, I don't, I don't, sometimes we'll send an officer on a bus, sometimes we'll send an officer trailing the bus, but we do that constantly. We stop our buses in and out of town so that we're sure the drugs aren't on it. But we also stop, we stop staff vehicles, we stop all of our school vehicles. It's just, and it's not because we think our staff and our students are transporting the drugs. It sends a message to everybody, don't try to use our vehicles because we're going to catch you. And when we catch you, we're going to prosecute you. And I think that that's really the message that's sent here, is it is going to be done. And the people are going to work together, especially in the southern part of the state, and the western part of the state, and we're not going to let it happen. And if it happens, we're going to find them, and we're going to prosecute them, and we're going to put them in jail. How do you distinguish between innocents and those who are the actual criminal transporting? You know, uh, in this case, it's obvious. A bunch of school children are not trafficking. Uh, marijuana, but what about the uh, what did you call them? Unknowing uh, mules. Mules. Yeah. How do you distinguish that when you do an investigation? Well, I, I'm the one who brought that up. I mean, that's just any investigation. Is you have a group of suspects. First, you may not know who the suspects are, but this case was good old-fashioned police work. Uh, uh, Mr. Paredes and Mr. Cosme uh, are victims of good police work. Uh, they tried to uh, capitalize on a weakness that they perceived, but eventually they got caught. Hence, that's why there was an indictment. It's, you know, every case is different. You just, you do, there's not a specific, sus, you, know, a, you know, a stereotype suspect. And you just look at it, and that's what, that's what the uh, agents did in this case. And shortly thereafter, I think Chief Montana can 
speak on this, that they had a meeting with, uh, I think, most of the school and talked about safety and issues that uh, school districts and also Border Patrol can do to help them to make this a non-factor again. This was a, from our investigation right now, we believe this, the vehicle was a vehicle of opportunity. And hopefully now that, that opportunity has been alleviated because of this. You learn from your lessons, and I think everybody, the school districts, law enforcement, and individuals that are learning that this wasn't going to happen again. Have either of the individuals mentioned that they may have done this in the past? I, I, that, it's, it's still an ongoing investigation at this point. I have to realize that the drug trafficking organizations try to utilize legitimate infrastructure to move their product. Okay? They want to try to blend in. And you're not going to go down the street and have a truck that says, hey, I got drugs in here. So what they try to do is they try to take advantage of legitimate infrastructure, and they change the way they do business constantly because we find things. And so, as, as Mr. Miller said before, they try to take advantage of every opportunity, and sometimes uh, people make it easy for them. So they're constantly on the lookout for different ways of moving things, and um, a lot of times they'll use um, innocence to do that. They'll try to blend in with uh, mothers and children, just something that looks like it's normal, and uh, that's how they work. And so this is another uh, case where they discovered a way. They thought they could get away with it, but they didn't. So uh, we're happy to say that uh, two people are going to go to jail probably for that. Any other questions? I just want to make clear, a grand jury returned an indictment against both these individuals. They are innocent until proven guilty, I just make that very clear. But the facts that we presented to the grand jury, the grand jury believed there was probable cause that they committed this offense. And that's why the evidence was presented to them. Okay? Thank you. Thank you all for coming today. Appreciate it.